He's the former president and publisher of the Sun Herald, and now he's on the radio. Welcome to Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. with uh, Billy Hughes, who had a lot of really important advice to, to give us about the moment we find ourselves in. So go back and look at that video on Facebook if you get an opportunity, if you didn't get a chance to see it or hear it. And now we have uh, John Hairston, who's the CEO of Hancock Whitney. And we're going to start with sort of a, an overall, uh, just sort of what's your impression of the situation we're dealing with. And then we'll talk about the economic situation facing the world, frankly, and then ultimately the United States. And then we'll get specific to the banking industry and then very specific to Hancock Whitney. So without any further ado, John, how are you doing, buddy? Doing good. Uh, actually, it's uh, it kind of feels, you know, the, the whole notion of the question, how are you doing, means yeah. something different today than it did 90 days ago. So I'm glad to say uh, my family, the people I, I love in my life are all doing real good. So thank you for good. asking. That's good. That's great to hear. And uh, <clears throat> so, John, you, here we are. We really do find ourselves once again. If it weren't Katrina, the BP oil spill, the Bonnie Carey spillway. But this has the makings of being something more challenging, more different than anything we've ever seen before. So what's your overall just thoughts about things? Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, it, 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 it just seems like maybe it was only 60 or maybe 90 days ago. I was with you in the studio filming a segment for your show. Uh, we were looking across the table. Each other had our headphones on, you know, doing the show. And, and I don't remember if it was during the show or maybe in our pre-recorded chatter, but one of the things we're talking about was how the economy's doing. Yeah. And I remember talking about there's really nothing in sight that would lead to the world or the U.S. or the state or the coast flipping over to recession, how things have changed. And so yeah. one of the biggest issues or biggest differences, really, from, uh, from this event to the last recession that we had uh, was how quickly everything happened and how uh, our country and really the world, uh, with all the different warnings of all the uh, the years of, of pandemic threats, was really so unprepared for the speed, the pace with which it all developed. On the other hand, uh, the American spirit, as it always does, perseveres, and the country has managed to find a sustainable operating model. I mean, the lights are on, uh, money is flowing, uh, the grocery stores have gear for us, uh, uh, and so the, then the country's running, right? I mean, so it's going okay. Um, it looks as if um, the biggest issues we'll face are we have a segment of the population that the virus really does uh, egregiously uh, impact. And then the economy may be, you know, a victim too, right? So it's uh, there's a tough all over. But the speed was probably the biggest difference. And John, you and I talk about this a lot because it's incredibly important to the region that Hancock Whitney does banking in. But when you think about a simultaneous impact of oil pricing and how that sort of contributes to the overall situation, talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, as, as with all, uh, you know, curves, right? You're plotting a shape of a curve over time. There's always good and bad, right? And so here we are looking at a period of time where unemployment, depending on who you you know, who, which which house you believe in terms of the forward-looking estimates. Um, the best estimate I've seen, I say best, let me define, the most optimistic number I've seen so far is a 65 to 7% unemployment rate for 2020 and 2021, which is more than double where it was uh, just a quarter ago, right? And yeah. so um, the most uh, negative is around 9%. So Call it six and a half to nine percent of a window of unemployment. So when you have a high employment rate, you need the cost of money to be cheap, and interest is at a right back where it was a few years ago, all time lows, right, for the history of the country. And then secondly, the impact of crude prices will create a little bit of relief at the pump. Um, that's it's happening so quickly that we really haven't seen that uh, materialize at the gas pump, but it will. Um, that also diminishes the fuel costs for the power utility providers. And so instead of increases in a, in a power bill or a gas bill, you may see decreases over the course of this year. So, uh, you know, there's good and bad in that, right? And so there's people that are harmed by it. There's people that benefit by it. But all in all, um, it, it's not going to be a great picture for the economy. And the, uh, I mean, GDP expanded 
nearly 2% in the fourth quarter. Um, and uh, right now, depending on, again, the, uh, the estimates that you believe, the first half of the year is looking more like around a, a, an incredible 20% uh, reduction in GDP. It, it's never happened that quickly and that deep before. Um, even in the Depression, um, when unemployment got to nearly 25%, we didn't have a, a one single six-month period where you had that much GDP contraction. So um, that's going to be ugly. But the second half of the year, depending on when the shelter at home uh, orders begin to soften and, and it's a little bit more safe to, to mingle and do commerce, um, we ought to see a sharp comeback, right? So um, if you think about a U-shaped recovery, that would be first half of this year, you're on the downside of the U, and second half of the year on the upside of the U. There's also uh, maybe a, an L-shaped recovery where you see the sharp drop in this first half of the year, and then a, a kind of a very, very slow recovery. That's sort of the worst case scenario. So, uh, uh, and even the worst case scenario is we finish 2021 back into expansion, but expansion from a lower base. And so mm -hmm. overall, what I would say is we're probably looking at 2023 or four before we get to an economy that looks like the one we had last year. So you think about you think about the economy, you think about small business and how it's important for them to be doing business in order to prime the pump. And now suddenly the pump's unprimed. And those businesses that might have been operating on a unfortunately a month to month basis or whatever it might be, it's really important that we do everything in our power to enable all small businesses to, to come back up again. So talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, the small businesses make the, the economy actually go. The, the big businesses do kind of the heavy lifting, so to speak. You know, they, take, they create power, they create raw products, they create things we buy off the shelf. Um, but if, if, if you can't get your hair cut and the dry cleaners isn't open and the local convenience store isn't open to go buy gas, I mean, that interrupts life, right? And so uh, we desperately need for a healthy economy, a healthy small business community. And that was really the thinking behind the CARES Act. And, and you know, there's always people on the fringes that want to beat up anything that Congress, the president, any elected leaders, I mean, from the local mayor up to the president and, uh, of the country, uh, there's always going to be an extreme one side or the other that don't like what they're doing. But I'll tell you, as, as, a, as, a, as a business guy that was raised in a small business, you know, in my dad's business, and I run a business that's really not that big. The bank has 4,500 people. We're, we're not a, you know, a huge chase or a Wells Fargo, someone like that. But from, from my chair, I think Congress did a pretty doggone good job with the CARES Act. Um, yeah. I mean, it's 800-something pages. That's a lot of language. It's got a lot of gray area in it. But all legislation enacted quickly has gray area, and there are various departments within the government and then the states themselves who will have to interpret what all that means. So uh, I, I think it's a bold statement to say that all these SBA, Small Business Administration loans that are really crucial for that small business sector, Ricky, that you mentioned, um, uh, the elected guys cast the vote and said they'd like to see it up and running in 15 days. But we're talking about an agency that is going to get more applications in a day than they've ever funded in a year. Right. And, and that's a lot to ask. And so yeah. I would just, you know, suggest that we bankers and, and clients who are looking desperately to get that assistance, um, look first at the checks coming to employees and to themselves that are going to help, you know, a little bit real quickly. And then as the loans begin to finally flow, when we get procedure, I mean, today is, is I know we're, uh, uh, I think we're showing, Wednesday, today is Tuesday, there's going to be, we still don't have procedures yeah. from SBA and, and they only got a bill Friday, right? So uh, it's going to take a few more days, I think, to get procedures so we can actually create some money flow. But uh, the, all the banks in the country are very anxious to begin participating in that because we know that's what keeps business alive through this period of time before employees can get back to work. And John, I've begun to have conversation with some small businesses who, who've already begun to understand how does that loan uh, apply to them if they meet the criteria it becomes a grant yeah and you know what it's real money it's real money at the ground level and it's going to i think it's going to make a substantial difference when you combine that with the other aspects of of the uh, of the bill yeah. so uh, we just need to get on the other side of this and you know billy hughes and i had a long conversation before we talked to you and that is if everyone would just work really hard 
to flatten the curve, to help us limit the spread so we can get on the other side of this, not overwhelm our healthcare system, keep our family safe, get on the other side of this and begin to appreciate what the recovery might look like. The sooner we get there, the better. That's the way you see it as well, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's the proverbial two-edged sword. You know, I mean, the, the virus is going to move through the country one way or the other, right? And so if you can keep the cases that require hospitalization and, and particularly the need of an intensivist unit to right. work on the, the patient, then uh, it, it kind of keeps a steady state operation. The hospitals can function normally. I mean, I mean doctors got to sleep too, right? And so if you get overloaded, things begin to slip. And so um, uh, maintaining distance, uh, you know, normal hygiene. I mean, you know, our, our moms all taught us to keep your hands clean. Right. I don't know that I've ever washed my hands. Uh, uh, it seems like every time I touch a door handle, like I got to go find some. Well, you have to. Wash my hands, right? You have to. That's well, that, that'll add. That'll that'll spread that curve out. The downside of that, and it's it's it, it's more benefit than than bad. But you know, the longer the curve stays high, the longer it takes to kind of get back to work, so got to speak. It. So okay. there's a good and a bad. And so I think the sweet spot, you know, as uh, 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 as we'd like to navigate our way to it is uh, is probably something that leads us to a peak in Mississippi of somewhere around the third week of April. Let's do this. Uh, we'll come back yeah. after the break and talk about Okay, break. sure. I'll come back to that. Uh-huh. You can also listen live to Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1 on your Amazon Alexa devices. Once you've enabled the skill, just say, Alexa, open Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast. Talking to the people that help make the coast such a unique place to live. This is Coast View with Ricky Matthews on Super Talk Mississippi Gulf Coast 103.1. Welcome back to Coast View. We have uh, John Harrison, the CEO of Hancock Whitney, with us today. And just before the break, he was talking about getting to the peak and on the other side of the peak. John, just finish your thought on that. Sure. I, I think, you know, based on all the medical information we're able to see, it looks like the peak in Mississippi, not necessarily the coast, but in Mississippi is the third week of April. Um, the coast, you know, was a little ahead of the rest of the state in terms of infections and hospitalizations. So it may be a week or so earlier, but but I think the message is we're, we're not through it yet. And so uh, uh, this is not a time for uh, for parties. It's uh, and it's also a time and I know it's tough for parents, but we got a lot of kids out of school right now. But you see them all gathered up and. These little guys are bored like crazy. They want to get outside. They want to see their buddies. But at the end of the day, while they're not necessarily at high risk, um, some of the people that come in contact with are. And so it's a really good time to keep people um, as, as, as far away from everybody else as you can reasonably until we get to the back of April and maybe things get a little better. So, so John, in terms of the banking industry as a whole, I think, you know, I've, I've read a lot about how much better capitalized we are than we were a decade ago. And the credit quality is exceptionally strong, uh, heading, head, was strong heading into 2020. So what, what's the position the banking industry operates from going into this? And then what will it look like on the other side of this? Well, it's, it's a terrific question. And, and uh, you know, we, we bankers wind a whole lot around uh, some of the requirements thrust upon us after the last uh, financial recession. And a lot of that was about building capital. And we thought we were building capital for a conventional recession, right? Um, uh, and so the industry, even though we whined about it a lot, it became a much, much stronger uh, a set of organizations. And here we are today with, uh, with you know, the GDP falling off the cliff, a lot of unemployment, offset by the benefits of the CARES Act. And we'll see how that all, that all works together. But uh, I think what we'll see is is industry as a whole building up reserves in the first quarter or two of the year for what could be losses down the road. But the ability of the industry to withstand that is tremendous. And yeah. so uh, in my career, banks have never been as well capitalized as they were at the onset of this. And with all the concerns about liquidity, I think the government, specific Federal Reserve, took tremendous action to make money generally available. So we're, I, I, you know, it, 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 we, we got to release earnings here in a few weeks, so I can't talk too much about the quarter, but I can tell you, we have never had as much cash in the balance sheet as we have right now, even more than right after Katrina. So we and, got about, uh, yeah. so we got about three three minutes and fifty seconds left. So um, let's bring it home to Hancock Whitney. Um, what else do you want to say about Hancock Whitney? Well, look, situation? we, you know, all of us along the Gulf of Mexico 
um, as organizations learned how to take, you know, belly punches from hurricanes. Katrina was the worst one, Ricky, you and I had to deal with in our professional careers. Um, and so while a pandemic and a hurricane are two very different things, a hurricane, the worst day is the first day, right? Um, with a pandemic, the worst day keeps on building and slowly gets worse. But 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 having the the fortitude just as individuals and then as teams to navigate through it is something I believe that uniquely those of us that live along the Gulf of Mexico have built a, a tremendous set of armor to be able to withstand that stress. And so, you know, we've got 4,500 people on our team that range from Jacksonville to Houston. And in my weekly updates with them, we talk a lot about the fact that we know how to navigate these waters and it isn't fun. I'd rather be working on something that's more exciting or, or uh, beneficial than dealing with a pandemic. But what is good is being able to see our clients manage their way through it too. So mm. it's a resilient part of the country. And, and the Mississippi coast where you and I are sitting today is particularly resilient in our ability to manage through these things. And, and I have absolute confidence we will find the silver lining in this cloud. It isn't real vivid right now, but it's coming. And somehow we'll come out the other side having made lemonades out of lemons. And one, another good thing, as we just talked about a few minutes ago, the, the bank is going to be in the middle of the, uh, the legislation helping, ultimately helping small businesses survive. So the bank's going to have a critical component to help businesses figure out how to navigate this. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen numbers that I kind of believe yet because we hadn't seen the SBA procedures, but I suspect we'll make more SBA guaranteed loans in the next two and a half months than we've made in the history of the company all combined, including Camille and Katrina, just because uh, and until the money runs out. And, and my gut feeling is if the program is as successful as we think it will be, Congress will replenish that pool. Mm. And it may be more towards smaller businesses because, you know, a small business yeah, you know, you know, the definition of it is still a number of employees, right? It may get a little smaller in the next round, but I do think we'll see more money available in the next act. Well, John, uh, we're kind of coming to the end of our time. Uh, you, you got a you got a, um, a closing thought in the in the last minute that we have? Yeah, um, I think the closing thought is uh, there's a glow on the horizon. Uh, it's the sunrise. It's not napalm. Everything's going to be okay. I think we all just have to be personal stewards of each other's safety and and do our best to keep moving forward, but let's not create any unnecessary mistakes. Um, and so uh, make good decisions, be calm, encourage each other, um, and come out the other side feeling as good about all the work that we all did together as we did after Katrina. Well, you, you, you know, those are wise words because you've been there, unfortunately, more than once. And you understand this region really well. You have responsibilities for the arm in New Orleans that is at the epicenter for the South. So um, you, you know what you're talking about. And we'll get to the other side of this. So with all that said, yeah. we're at the end of our segment. And I really appreciate you joining me. We'll see you in a couple of weeks and check in and see how things are going. Yeah, take care, Ricky. See okay. you, Cal. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Listen live or on demand and watch episodes of Coast View on your laptop, desktop, or on your phone or tablet by going to supertalkmsgolfcoast.com.